welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to demonstrate two different methods for installing or upgrading to Windows 11 on computers that don't meet Microsoft's stated requirements. Given that support for Windows 10 comes to an end on the 14th of October 2025, such methods are going to become more important. So let's go and get started. Here we can see the hardware requirements for running Windows 11. And whilst most computers manufactured in the past 10 years do meet most of this specification, many are unsupported for one or two reasons. Firstly, some computers do not have TPM 2.0 security modules. And secondly, most PCs or laptops that are more than three or four years old have an unsupported processor. To be clear, this doesn't mean that their processor will not work, just that Microsoft have chosen not to officially support it. Computers that don't meet all Windows 11 requirements will display this message in the update section of Windows 10. Or we can visit this page, which, like all the pages I show, will be linked in the video description, where we can download and run Microsoft's PC Health Check application. We can then click on Check Now to find that the computer I'm using, which is the HP Elite Desk 800 G2 that I looked at on the channel a few weeks ago, does not meet Windows 11 requirements. And if we scroll down, we find out why, and it's because it hasn't got a supported processor. If we try to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, the installer won't let us continue. So what are the best solutions? Well, we can download a Windows 11 ISO file, use a program called Rufus to create an installation media that includes some registry hacks, and then use this to perform a successful clean install. Or we can download a Windows 11 ISO file and then, whilst running Windows 10, edit the registry to avoid hardware checks and then perform a successful upgrade. As a third option, we could create and boot a standard Windows 11 installation media and break out of it to manually edit the registry to avoid hardware checks and then perform a successful install. But as this produces an identical result to the first option and is more complex, I'm just going to demonstrate the first two methods. Just before we proceed, I must caution that Microsoft does not recommend installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, and it's got a page all about this right here, which includes this disclaimer. As it states, installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware may result in compatibility issues, and your PC will no longer be supported and won't be entitled to receive updates. Now, since the launch of Windows 11 in August 2021, Microsoft has supplied security and other updates to unsupported computers running Windows 11. And there is no indication it's going to stop doing so. But you must accept that everything shown in this video is undertaken at your own risk. Right, whether you want to do a clean install using Rufus or an upgrade via a registry edit, the process starts by downloading a Windows 10 ISO file. To do so, visit this page that I'll link in the video description and scroll down to the section where we can download the Windows ISO. Here it is down here, but we can select here the one option, which is Windows 11 multi-edition ISO for x64 devices, and then we can click on download. And once it's validated our request, let's scroll down a bit to see things properly. We now need to choose our language. I'm going to choose, I think, uh, English International, like that, and click on Confirm. And it'll validate again. There we are. And we can now download our ISO file. I've set things up to save this in my downloads folder in a folder called Windows 11, but you can save it wherever you like, although do note that the file is over five gigabytes in size. Right, with our ISO downloaded, 
we're now ready to do a clean install of Windows 11 using Rufus. And do note that this will delete everything from the system drive on your computer, including all programs and data. This noted, let's now go across to the Rufus website and we can download from here the Rufus utility. We just scroll down and uh, there it is. We'll just click download like that and save the file. There we are, nice small file. So we'll now uh, close down the browser and go across to the file which is now sitting here and run up Rufus. Do we want to do it Windows? Yes, we do. And here we are running Rufus and I'll get rid of that just to make things tidy. As we can see at the top, Rufus has picked up a USB flash drive that I've got plugged into the computer and which it's going to turn into our Windows 11 install media. Note that this drive must be at least 8 gigabytes in size and that everything on it will be deleted. Next here we need to pick up our ISO image. So we'll go across to here and click on select. And uh, there is our ISO file we downloaded like that. And then everything else here I'm going to leave on the defaults. So now we just need to click on start. And this is the really clever bit. Rufus is giving us some very useful options for our installation media. And the first one here is remove requirement for four gigabyte RAM secure boot and TPM checks. That doesn't there mention the check for a compatible processor for Windows 11, but it will include the registry edit for that as well. And below that, as you can see, it's an option which is pre-ticked for removing the requirement for an online Microsoft account. And I'm going to leave this ticked because I want to create a local account during this Windows 11 install. But do note, if your Windows license is linked to your Microsoft account, you probably shouldn't tick this box because you'll want to log in with your Microsoft account, which should allow Windows 11 to be automatically activated. Although you could always log back into your Microsoft account later on. Just because the option is available, I'm also going to click Disable Data Collection so we skip the privacy questions during the Windows installation. And with this all set, let's click on OK. It does now check. We know we're about to delete everything on our USB device. We know that's true, so we'll click OK. And there we are, our Windows 11 installation media with hacks pre-applied for unsupported hardware is being created. And there we are, it's finished. So let's uh, close this down like that. And we now need to reboot our computer. So we'll uh, go down there and do a restart. And here we are booting up again, where we need to boot from the USB drive. On this particular HP computer, I'm doing this by pressing the escape key on boot. And I then need to select the uh, boot menu down there. And uh, from that, I can now select our USB drive. But do note the method for doing this varies between computers. And if you want assistance booting from a USB drive, just look to my video called PC BIOS settings. Anyway, the Windows installer has now started as we can see. So let's uh, click on next and on uh, install now and setup is now starting. So we should be able to proceed on through in the normal fashion. On this screen, you'll see we're offered the option to either upgrade or to do a customized install of Windows only. And we're going to take the second option here, which is for a clean install as we'll look at upgrading in the next part of the video. So I now click on next, it's picked up the right place to install, we'll accept we want to do it and all that, and it'll get on with the installation. Here we are, things are happening. I'll just flick rapidly through all of these questions. And now it is asking us to sign in. Rufus has sadly failed in its attempt to stop this happening. Microsoft really does want this to happen, so I'm not that surprised. There's no way we can get out of this, doesn't matter what we click on. So let's revert to plan B, where I enter the email address no at thankyou.com and continue, which will cause problems. We can put anything in there. We'll put hello. It won't like this. Oh, look, something's gone wrong. Never mind. And guess what? We're now setting up a local account, which I'll call EC. And I now just have to answer the three stupid Microsoft questions. And here we are, the process is successfully complete. Windows 11 is now installed on our computer in all of its glory with its centered menu, exciting things like that. 
But for now, I think I'll just check that Solitaire is working, always a good idea. And I'll come back to you very shortly to demonstrate an upgrade as opposed to a clean install. Greetings! Here I am back again, and by the magic of filmmaking, our Elite Desk 800 is now once again running Windows 10. And we've got the Windows 11 ISO file downloaded as we had previously. So everything is now ready for me to demonstrate an upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And you may be thinking, why can't we just boot the Rufus installation media like we did in the last part of the video and select the upgrade option? But if we do that, as we're seeing here, a compatibility report pops up saying that the upgrade option isn't available using the installation media. So we have to use another method. Specifically, what we're going to do is to follow a process detailed by Microsoft on this web page. And if we scroll down here, we see the method. Here it is, it outlines a registry hack that allows you to upgrade to Windows 11, although Microsoft do advise you shouldn't do this. And it is worth noting that this hack only works on computers that meet all Windows 11 requirements, aside from having a compatible processor and or TPM 2.0. So it's possible you may try this method and find out that you can't proceed but you won't have lost anything and you can still do a clean install as we did in the last part of the video. Also make sure that you're fully backed up before you begin, as the only sensible assumption is that you might lose everything on your C drive trying this out. So if you're not fully prepared for that, do not proceed. But of course, we are going to proceed and we'll start by mounting the Windows 11 ISO file. So we'll right click it and click on mount like that. It'll mount a virtual DVD drive, and we've now got a setup file. And if we double click that setup file to run it like that, there we are, yes, Microsoft, we want to do it. And in a second, it'll come up, there it is. And we're going to now click on next, but I will tell you this isn't going to work. It'll check for updates, and then after that, it'll check our PC. And oh look, our processor isn't supported for this version of Windows. And the reason I run this and let it fail is because doing so makes it easier to apply a registry hack, because by running that process, it sets up a new folder in the registry editor. So let's go to the registry editor. We'll go to search and type reg edit like that. It'll bring it up there and we can click on registry editor. Do we want to go there? Yes, we do. And we want to navigate to H key local machine, to system, and then to setup down here. And then in setup, we need to go to the newly created Mo setup. Next, we want to right click Mo setup and do a new D word value like that. And we need to call this allow upgrades with unsupported TPM or CPU. And do note that this is case sensitive. And we now need to change the value of this from zero to one. So we'll double click it and change that zero to a one like that. And there we are, we've applied our registry hack. So if the world is with us, we can now click on setup again and run it again and let it go through. There we are, click on next. It'll check for updates. We've seen this before. And it's now again checking our PC. And yes, this time things are going to be okay. So we'll accept the license agreement like that. And look, Microsoft is now informing us that our PC doesn't meet the minimum system requirements for running Windows 11. We've got a version of the disclaimer we looked at earlier in the video. So we have to accept this is OK, which of course I will, like that. And there we are. We're now ready to install Windows 11 Pro, keeping personal files and apps. So let's click on Install. Well, knock me down with a feather. It's worked. We had no questions to answer during the process, and clearly this is an upgrade of our previous system. I can still see we've got Blender there. We can run up Blender now in Windows 11. And is it going to work? It looks like it is. This is a test, and uh, does it pull in a file? This is checking our applications are there, and our files are there. They most definitely are. So I'm impressed. 
we've successfully upgraded from Windows 10 to Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Unless your computer is very old indeed, it's likely you'll be able to install Windows 11 using one of the methods I've covered in this video. I also suspect that Microsoft will continue to provide updates to unsupported hardware, so it can't be accused of forcing millions of people to scrap perfectly decent computers. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,